How's it going everybody? My name is Doge and today I'm here with Fair once again and today we're gonna review the most expensive new car from the latest update. Now this car is perfect in every single way, shape, or form. This is one of Germany's most famous and iconic cars and it was manufactured in Germany and only sold a limited amount in the US and it's tremendously rare IRL. So anyway, this is the 1954 Mercedes 300 SL Gullwing. Now this car has a, a very sleek design. It has Gullwing doors as you might guess. It has a lot of air vents. It has like fog lights. It has, it's basically what a 50 supercar would look like. Fair, what are your honest thoughts on this? Oh my God, I, I like it cause uh, it's a Mercedes. But not only that, uh, it brings back a lot of history from Mercedes. Uh, yeah, like you said, I like about the sound, the body style, the going doors and uh, the performance back then was pretty outstanding for a, a pretty sleek looking car back in the day all right now speaking of performance this car actually went like 150 miles per hour i think so and and it was all from a little puny three and th like 2.9 3 liter flat six engine now i think this made like 200 ish horsepower this car had i think like 200 horsepower and um i'm gonna guess like 175 pound feet of torque and uh which helps it accelerate now this car was only offered in rear wheel drive and was offered in both a roadster and a coupe unlike the coupe the Roadster had conventional doors, while the coupe had bullwing doors, as you might guess. So anyway, now that the looks and performance things are covered, let me show you guys the new dealership page. Alright everyone, so here we are at the new dealership page for the 1955 300 SL for Mercedes, also called the 1955 Stuttgart Monster, as you can see right there. And it is offered in nine different colors, all of which were factory in 1955, all of which look outstandingly good on, on this car. Now, they did get the performance right. I think they, like, retuned it. So, this car was rear-wheel drive. It weighed, th it, it exactly weighed 3,300 tons. It was two-seater. So, it actually made 22 miles per gallon since the, since the flat six was naturally aspirated. Now, it only comes in one trim that's priced at $1,287,000, which by far makes this car the most expensive car we've ever reviewed on this channel so yeah it has 15 inch chrome rims and uh yeah 215 horsepower i was right so yeah this car is perfect in every way shape or form let's go over the sounds now for some reason they put the sound of a 2.8 liter v8 in there for some odd reason so anyway without 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 further ado let's really get into the speed test all right so here we are at the speed test let's floor it in three two one go Alright, so what we're looking at here is a top speed of 159 miles per hour, followed by a four-speed manual. Let's check the braking. Quite horrible brakes. I mean, what's I mean? It's kind of expected because this is this is like a 1950s car, but given it given that it was like had had all this stuff, it had pretty good brakes for its time. But eh, not not very good for today, for like by modern standards. So anyway, let's see how these cars drive. All right, upon driving the 300 SL, I noticed I noticed a drastic well, 
I've noticed something like really, really weird. For for a car that's rear wheel drive, it surprisingly has a lot of understeer. And especially for a car that, that was technically considered the world's first supercar, since this was before the Lamborghini Miura came out, it's kind of like it's kind of like you're driving a Formula One car because it handles a, it handles really good. It's heavyweight can cause it to have a little body roll, and that can cause a bit of oversteer at times. But yeah, honestly, driving this thing feels like you're driving a boat. But at the same time, it's on land. It's like a it's like a land yacht per se, but like not really because it's technically a supercar. So it has a a lot of a lot of like techniques when it comes to handling. So um yeah, fair. What do you think about the driving experience? Like how? What do you think? What like how can you describe your driving experience with the 300 SL? Um, <clears throat> feels real nice, honestly. Um. Like you said, it does have some body roll, which can cause uh, understeer and oversteer. But other than that, uh, it's a pretty good handling car. And what I like about it is the top speed. It feels kind of realistic for a first ever supercar. But yeah, other than just having a unique body style and a decent, powerful engine, uh, this car is pretty good in my opinion. Price wise, I'm not really sure, but it's pretty fun. Honestly, yeah, I can agree fair and and about what you said with the top speed But when this when this first came out like a day and a half ago the top speed was only 130 so they so they quickly patched that up and now it goes 159 so I so that's a really nice touch But the last thing they should do to fix this car is fix the engine sound it does not have a v8 Because <laughs> honestly, that's what it that's what it's sounding like here and honestly, yeah, I can perfectly agree. This car's this car's priced at over a million dollars, and in my opinion, it's very worth it because you're driving a very a very famous and like you're driving a very famous German icon. And like, come on, what's not to love about this car? It's very pretty. It's very like, it's very nice to drive. It actually shifts pretty well. It's very nice. It's very nice to like cruise in, but I don't. But yeah, this car is practically perfect in my eyes. So if you guys enjoyed me and Fair's review, be sure to like and comment as I'm getting pretty close to 2,000 subscribers, which I cannot thank you guys enough for. And if you guys want me to reach that goal, remember to subscribe, like, comment, and share, and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye and have a great rest of your day. Unlike Fair, who's being a total idiot. Goodbye!